about a decade ago i really intentionally started using storytelling in product design mm. one was this situation uh, in 2013 you know i had gone to san francisco for some uh, work while i was at this company what is storytelling mm. and herein lies the answer basically like you know your even when you're creating a story or empathizing with the character storytelling is essentially a set of events a sequence of events that you're stringing together in a particular manner to create some kind of emotional resonance with the audience empathy is a key aspect of storytelling and design both hi welcome to another podcast episode of design talk with hemant i'm happy to present a very experienced design leader su basu su is a storyteller by heart she has been designing since two decades and has led teams at ibbo microsoft adobe and atlassian in this episode we talk about how one's thinking can shape up early on to become a good storyteller and the ingredients of storytelling process we'll also talk about what exactly is storytelling in the world of product and ux design why storytelling is important how why and when it works why it doesn't work at times and how storytelling can help with empathizing with end users in a very effective way i am sure this episode is going to give you a lot of fresh ways to present your design proposals to your peers managers stakeholders and clients come let's jump into the conversation Sunandini welcome to the podcast um thank you so much for joining uh, today i'm very excited to talk about uh, a very hot topic of storytelling in ux design first i would like to start by talking about yourself how you got into this uh, whole domain of ux design uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll walk from there so hemant it's wonderful to be here thanks for inviting me always glad to talk about storytelling which is i'm really passionate about it um so my full name is sunandini most people call me su i've been a practitioner of ux design for the last 18 19 years now mm-hmm. primarily worked in product companies in india so was a senior designer at adobe and then um was a design leadership in document cloud there then joined microsoft and was leading the design team there for microsoft edge the new one that was shipped in 2019 and then lately i'm at atlassian again leading a design team there and as a storyteller i've been a storyteller for most of my life since childhood you know writing and drawing stories so always have done that and uh, the journey into design has been very organic and i would say it's very it it has been a lucky break um you know i grew up in calcutta and typical bengali family typical uh, you know school you will just going to school coming back doing your homework and as in a bengali family you know you're always encouraged to uh, you know pra- you know go into music or art or some kind of creative hobby and uh, that's what we did i was also lucky that you know i lived in a joint family mm. so you get to see a lot of different people with their own uh, you know different creative crafts hobbies that they were pursuing and you see all of this but I didn't know anything about design. Never even heard of that word. Right. And uh, in twelfth, when you're talking about career choices, you know, a family friend happened to mention that there's something called NID, and uh, why don't you write to them and you know apply there? Mm-hmm. And stroke of luck, I just did that and got through, and it happened. And my parents were very supportive, mm-hmm. and I was able to go and study there. Okay. I didn't really know much about design at that time. um i remember telling them in the interview that i actually wanted to be a storyteller okay and i wanted to tell stories and uh, and of course getting through nid is of course doesn't make you a designer right you know um for me that place was very magical but it took a few years uh, it took a few years for uh, all of us to like you know uh, get rid of the conditioning right. the social conditioning from you know from the past the unlearned. subconscious yeah the unlearned that and be ready and open to the possibilities that the design education could give hmm. and it did take a couple of years for me for hmm. sure hmm. and while i was at nid so i studied animation film design 
and um, you know the good thing was that you really got exposed to a lot of different kinds of filmmaking um, you know different kinds of storytelling through different mediums like you know uh, graphic design illustration also animation film and video mm -hmm. and uh, you know you think about disney and you think about like eisenstein russian f animation polish animation you see different kinds of cultural nuances and metaphors and different ways of storytelling mm -hmm. you you start to look at you know indian cinema right differently uh, so you know that was a melting pot of many ideas of course the community different people sharing very provocative ideas right uh, so that was uh, you know kind of like the absorb to absorb all of that in a place like this that was magical right it took me a long time to actually apply that okay in in real life after he started working and then uh, uh, after i graduated from nid actually ux was just taking off okay so i was doing flash animation and i started doing flash websites okay now it's called character i think adobe character animate or something like that adobe animate Ad adobe animate right and uh, uh, started doing websites with that and mm -hmm. then you start thinking about usability because it was the thing you know websites needed to be usable right and that's how i got into ux very organically right without you know any kind of uh, intentional decisions yeah and storytelling is actually very interwoven hmm. so while i was at nid i was always drawing you know all the time and um, used to keep some journals hmm. of my day to day you know started making characters of myself going through hmm. life over there hmm. and then a friend of mine showed me this book uh, persepolis okay by marian satrapi okay and she is this um, you know iranian comic book artist and okay. she had uh, left iran to go study in france and then her comic book was about her journey leaving her family how it was growing up there in iran and the differences in france and so on okay and for me it was the first time that you could actually you know you saw somebody talking about their personal experiences through this comic medium okay because till then you know you're used to the superhero comics right you've seen you know asterix tintin you know that's one kind of storytelling right and you've never really seen a human being talk about their own personal lives through yeah. comics yeah. and that was really inspiring for me so i started doing that same thing in my own work like mm. i started doing comics through my sketchbooks and i think within a few years blogger wordpress and all these things were really big yeah so i started blogging and started putting my comics out there and that became like a purpose to the drawing okay so i still do that even today mm. um over time like i think i've been doing this for at least over 20 years you start to see magic in real life in ordinary life like small daily things become magical and have a p potential for a story mm -hmm. and a friend of mine says you know see magic in the mundane mm -hmm. um so i love that part about storytelling okay. and um essentially that you know it's a good time to step back and think of storytelling the definition of storytelling mm -hmm. which is actually you know it's a sequence of events that unfold over time mm -hmm. and through this uh, you know the storytelling elements of drama and characterization mm -hmm. you're actually reframing mm -hmm. the facts mm -hmm. you're actually trying to create some new meaning a new joy right um, you know some new kind of emotional resonance with the audience and that's what i love about storytelling you know right anything is possible if you tell it and you can strike different kinds of audiences with the different ways of telling that really excites me about this uh, medium after this whole journey how did you transform this journey into uh, storytelling in ux and product design uh, and at the same time what according to you is storytelling in ux design yeah right so you know very interesting question about a decade ago i really intentionally started using storytelling in product design mm. one was this situation uh, in 2013 you know i had gone to san francisco for some uh, work while i was at this company and uh, the amazing street art there really made me excited to start doing street art myself mm -hmm. but i was in india so how could i do that right so i envisioned this way of you know being able to make a canvas from a built environment from a building wall okay and then digitally create the art and be able to post it on that wall Graffiti with augmented you mean. Yes, exactly, graffiti. Okay. With uh, virtual graffiti, mm -hmm. with uh, you know, with augmented reality. Of course, a lot of the technology was so new at that time, and half of it didn't even exist. Um, so the company I worked for at that time, of course, they 
could use that patent so we filed a patent and they own that patent right and um, but the you know the while communicating the value prop of that concept you know that's where i faced a lot of challenges with what is the kind of storytelling i must do mm-hmm. uh one reason is that you know this kind of there was no known problem it's not an articulated problem nobody has said that i want to do this right. i want to you know it's not like people have said that oh we want to create digital graffiti right. and what is the app to do that like Or, you used to say that designers first look for a problem to solve exactly exactly we're so used to that right what's right. the problem i'm going to solve you create the how might we statement right but here there was no how I, how might we statement and right. you're create trying to create a whole new concept a whole new value prop what is the right way to communicate that to people so people understand what this app can do yeah and uh, i i mean i went through a number of different uh, you know storytelling uh, a number of different sort of mediums of communication mm. then finally i landed up on the fact that you know this new concept to make it really believable and understandable you have to put it in a very universal life situation a okay. very simple context that everybody can understand mm. so i made a story okay. that about this uh, guy he wants to propose to his girlfriend it's a big magical moment it's a grand gesture that he has to make okay and um, he basically we were in delhi at that time and uh, he basically decides to take the facade of the india gate and you know paint his proposal with this app on that facade okay and since it's digital of course it's not visible to anyone else okay. and then he sends this phone to his girlfriend and that phone has the app and it leads her through you know uh, through location specific uh, guidance to this uh, india gate and she holds it up and she sees the proposal through this okay. augmented reality virtually um, virtually right and i um, got some friends together borrowed some camera and all of that and we made this film okay. because even animation and all were really not communicating this this had to be done with live action and everything okay so I made this film and then that film really started to make people understand what the concept of this app is what it can do okay. and all the possibilities so that's when i realized that you know it really works to envision something new when that opportunity is still not articulated or there's some new uh, idea that you want to convey right so storytelling is a great vehicle for that right another you know very useful way to use it is um, when you have some good research done mm-hmm. and you want to envision those research insights into new value for the customers and you know through the research you know what the customers are suffering and you know what are their needs what problems they are encountering and you want to take those insights and craft that vision mm-hmm. which is a which is your design proposal mm-hmm. that you know let's you know customers are facing this let's put them uh, you know let's brainstorm on these ideas and let's come up with the solutions and then how do we sort of get that out to stakeholders how do we make people realize that this is something that we need to think about and so storytelling is a great medium to do that um at one of the past companies i worked in uh we had a lot of great research that we used and then we envisioned new ideas and then we put together all of those ideas into another film again mm-hmm. uh it was a day in the life of a particular customer mm-hmm. and we took that um, you know uh as we went through her journey throughout the day we basically showed how our product is going to help her through various challenges that she faces during the day and helps to solve that and uh, this video basically the the vehicle this um, artifact that we created really helped to empathize all the audiences to her cause like okay she is really feeling challenged this is you know this is how we are going to solve her problem okay. and so on so again storytelling was a really good medium here to you know envision these future possibilities and new value for the customer right so whether you have data or not whether you have a problem statement or not storytelling allows people to empathize with the customers and um, possibly the problems that customers may have with yeah. their uh, uh, potential problems yeah and you said something very key here you know the the fact that whether you have data or not hmm. and that's i think one of the biggest aspects of storytelling is that you don't need always you don't need that factual information all the time yeah because one thing that i always hear is that um whenever uh, any designer presents their portfolio or whenever a designer presents their proposal to a particular design solution to a pro- problem 
they are always expected to produce data non designers uh, especially the stakeholders always say what is the data to prove that this is a problem that needs to be solved yeah right uh, why should i solve this problem so uh, how do you tackle that is storytelling the answer to that uh, that's one of the answers okay. so i would say that you know we always feel that when we are asked for data it has to be quant data like quantitative data correct but research is also qualitative data correct you know the understanding of the users that you gain that's qualitative data correct so how you frame that correct how you frame that from the customer's perspective that this so is a they problem also say don't uh, don't don't take what users tell but look at what users feel yeah the underlying needs and motivations right and storytelling is the medium to really envision that in an imaginative way right because here you're not actually um uh, you're hooking the audience who are lis- who are watching this right into the life of the user through the emotions right you know through this uh, kind of imaginative envisioning right you're not hooking them through the data or the quantitative data that doesn't yet exist correct that will only exist when the things become real but do you always rely completely on imagination or is there some qualitative data no no it has world? to have some qualitative database because otherwise you know like um i can cook up anything i want you can cook up anything <laughs> and you know being i am very opinionated like for example if you don't do a persona correctly correct it can be so easily a story without any kind of realistic underpinnings yeah so it's very important to have that qualitative research and form your strong foundation right that's of very the work. important yes yeah. otherwise you know it can be anything a lot of like you know yeah fiction fiction exactly yeah yeah so storytelling is not a sure shot success also right yeah it's not and uh, you know going back to what you said earlier like what is storytelling mm. and herein lies the answer basically like storytelling is essentially a set of events a sequence of events that okay. you're stringing together in a particular manner to create some kind of emotional resonance with the audience the audience also plays a very key role mm. you are crafting that story for that audience and you're adding elements of drama characterization you know soundtrack and all of this it's one of those very designerly type of things where we say you know joseph albers has a quote 1 mm. plus 1 equal to 3 mm. it's one of my favorites because what is that magic factor right what is that x factor that's what storytelling does with facts and with qualitative data with any kind of data basically mm. storytelling just sort of like you know uh gives it that you know it um gives it that added magnification mm. through imagination and through creativity it really like you know gives it a new meaning and reframes the whole set of things into a set of uh into some kind of emotional resonance that the audience or the reader will you know uh resonate with and right. they latch on to that emotion right they latch on to that empathy right uh, you know through empathy um so storytelling is is basically that and of course when when something is like you know when there's this um, subjective factor to it hmm. then of course failure and success are not very clear and binary there's no right. clear boundaries here can you point out any differences if at all there are between a user journey and a storytelling uh, process actually um whenever you write stories user stories or you think about the user journey it's very similar mm. you know you're thinking about the change of the user's behavior over time mm. and storytelling is also a sort of a laying out of events or a character's behavior mm. over time mm. we like to say that there's a hero's journey you know and through that uh that uh, you know that sequence of time that character undergoes some kind of transformation right and that is exactly how it is with our users right when we think about the user's journey they are undergoing some transformation with right. the help of the services we are providing right to them so it's it's got very similar elements here and in fact you know the hero's journey when you think about it in pure storytelling craft it's an arc and it starts from a point which is like a context you know the introduction of yeah. introducing the hero then the hero falls into the pit of conflict basically some challenges in their lives and that i mean you can relate the same thing to the our users yeah they are having some kind of trouble that we need to solve for them and then of course in stories there's a build up hmm. and um, you know sequence of events that happen that lead to some kind of 
um, uh, some kind of climax or some resolution where the you know the challenges are overcome okay or the hero you know transcends whatever situation that they are in and finally the resolution so if you look at it from that perspective our we are also putting the user through a similar kind of arc that uh, you know your the user is facing some kind of problem and as they you know try uh, do the task that is set out for them hmm. without too many challenges and through all following all the steps of the task they reach the end of the task they successfully complete the task and you know they get what they wanted like you know hmm. whether it's like submitting your income tax hmm. or uh, you know booking a flight ticket or hmm. something hmm. these are all like sort of like climaxes your checkout and then you have your final you know resolution hmm. so it's a very similar mapping there right so user journeys for sure another really useful uh you situation to use storytelling is you know when you are presenting your design proposal how are you uh you know lifting your ui the set of ui that you're sharing the proposals is to talk about it always from the user's point of view right i mean we say that all the time but what does it really look like it means that when you sh- share the context that you know our user is this uh person who needs to uh, view a pdf on the mobile right and they're always on the go they are you know they are challenged all the time because they can't carry a laptop or they don't have a tablet or anything like that so they have to see their the pdfs on the phone yeah. and it's a matter of life and death because their work depends on these documents right and they have to go and show it to their customers and get signatures and all of that so how do we help to solve the problem of this customer who needs to be on the go but and yet view the mo- pdf on the mobile mm. without losing any kind of document information or you know without having to navigate too much through it and so you set up the context in that way yeah and then you can say that you know these are the j- jobs to be done that we've identified yeah. or these are the top tasks that the user needs to complete yeah. through our uh, product yeah and then you basically unfold your design proposal that yeah. this is the pattern these are the you know these are the solutions and so on and uh, of course at the end of it is a resolution for the user mm. they get to do their job they basically finish their task in a given time you know their boss is happy with them and so on uh, so things like that so communicating your design uh, you know your proposals. design proposal very grounded right. in the user's life right. so you're actually reframing the design proposal from the conversation of ui components or the design system or the design pattern say you're not using progressive disclosure or drop down or something like that but you're actually talking about it from the story of the user so it is very similar to user journey right exactly exactly but so, it, it does have a little bit of dramatization it does have yes so it connects uh, it it has a lot of empathy yeah you have to frame your sentences in such a way the craft of storytelling so that the user is able to see the problem that the i mean the audience is able to see the problem the user is going through oh the user is seeing this document oh there are like 40 documents the data is not great it's not loading hmm. and he needs to access this have you seen in your experience uh, storytelling working well with stakeholders when you pro- present proposals with yeah. storytelling does it work well with stakeholders yeah with you have or without to, data does no that's mean? absolutely true so in many cases it has worked okay uh, some of the places where it's been successful is you know so stakeholders are very busy people yeah so you need to and especially senior leadership and they are also very dependent on data and you know numbers exactly so i would not say that remove data and numbers altogether but right. use it as a starting point right so you can say you know we investigated that there was this 30% drop off at this point of the journey and then how did we go and investigate hmm. when we found we found that the user was having these challenges hmm. but your design proposal when you come to the design proposal which is a future scenario which is not yet built hmm. that's when you go into your imaginative storytelling hmm. you know so um grounding your context of the design proposal in data always works then they know that it's a real problem it's an actual problem it and they realize the importance of why we are solving this okay like if the drop off is only 3% maybe we would not need to do a major intervention hmm. or you know we may not put two weeks sprint work behind it but if the drop off is 30% of course it's a big problem why are they dropping off we need to go find out yeah. 
right? So grounding the context of the problem in the data is very important. I mean, uh, of your design proposal is very important. So, um, what are the day-to-day -day tasks a UX designer does in in the process of doing a storytelling uh, work? For example, there is a team like you have a team of UX designers, and you need to prepare to tell a story uh, on a user problem. What do you gather? Like, what kind of data do you gather? How do you prepare for storytelling? What's the mindset one needs to have? <coughs> uh so you know like uh, like we just said you know understanding the context of the problem why this problem needs to be solved why it's important for the business mm. that's ob obviously very important mm. and most of the time it comes from something that already exists that you know oh, we've re we've noticed that customers are not doing this much this enough or we've noticed that you know this new offering that we've uh, released it's not getting enough eyeballs or you know discoverability is lacking how can we solve it right or we do we know that nobody's you know finishing booking this hotel hmm. like when they're doing a hotel reservation they're not able to book it or whatever right so it comes from some real need of the business right so starting from there but then grounding your um, uh, that problem into the what is going on with the user at that time like what are the contexts in which they are doing this task knowing that that comes from research that comes from understanding your customer hmm. and uh, you know okay there actually we have put this task in the wrong place okay this task maybe maybe for example this hmm. task should be done later hmm. let them finish this part or they didn't expect this to be here so they were they obviously closed this you know window when it popped up hmm. it was an interruption it was not the right time hmm. so knowing what the customer is it defines a lot of the de design decisions that you're making okay but when you're communicating your design proposal that's when you are like you know utilizing all of this hmm. so uh, for example uh this new offering that has not been you know adoption has been not has not been very great hmm. you know why is that oh because customers w did not even know that it was there okay. you know it was hidden under two three layers of drop downs how would they know and maybe in your design proposal what you're doing is you know it's you're uh, connecting it with another related task that they're doing hmm. and at that end of that task you are sharing hey by the way the step 2 of this is usually this right or people typically tend to do this after that so you're using that kind of hook to bring the customer into that hmm. and so when you tell the story you say that oh yeah a customer they were doing this task and then typically at the, when they finish the task they finish the task right they don't remember that they have to do this other task right like maybe in enterprise software it's about you know checking checking a box and writing a status report to their supervisor at the end of this task right now if they don't remember this they will not do it right right so what you can do is you know as a as a designer utilize these moments like oh customers forget right you know so that comes from your understanding of the customer right that they had just completed this big task and they're looking you know at that time we need to give them a reminder simple usability Got right it. recognition over recall and yeah. you know uh, don't make them think yeah very cliche terms but i'm using them yeah so your you, you how you are empathizing with the customer that comes from your knowledge of the customer and you're saying that okay let's loop in this event at that time yeah so you are crafting that customer journey your future customer journey by looping all these tasks hmm. in the sequence in which you know you think it's a better way for them to hmm. do hmm. so would empathy map play a role here i would say so yes yeah. empathy is a key aspect of storytelling, of storytelling and design both hmm. you know your even when you're creating a story or empathizing with the character hmm. when you're uh, you know uh doing a design proposal you are empathizing with the user at every step mm. that will this be hard or less like for example yeah for example if they need to you know go through a list of 100 items and choose two mm. what is the best way to display those 100 items yeah would you expect them to go through 100 things manually you know so empathy is a core aspect yeah that's why designers are actually the best people in a in a product company because that's where i come from they are the best people to use storytelling hmm. you know because they have that empathy they have that creativity they have the imagination these are all you know skills that they are they are born with and um, 
bringing that to their day to day work mm. you know in this way imagining Im- imagining situations like this um another great way actually which you uh, as you as you um, reminded me himant was that you know making other team player other team members like your cross craft team members engineering developers product you know product managers making them empathize with your users as well so basically you know you sometimes can uh, you know put a set of research um, artifacts together like mm. a few user videos even if there's really small videos but you can create a narrative in such a way that oh all these types of users are suffering from the same problem mm. and you know show them all different kinds of users who are suffering the you know the elderly the challenged ones or this busy student you said that you know maybe as a team we all thought that uh, you know our users are very technically savvy yeah but this set of videos shows that a lot of them they're are not. not they're all getting all, they're all struggling here yeah even the developers the people who are developers and are using our tool are struggling here yeah so using those research insights are a great way to actually build empathy in the team um and you can always use storytelling for that so now you don't have to give me examples but have you faced um uh like when you have presented stories as part of your proposals to stakeholders and product managers uh have you faced rejections and how have you dealt with that uh, the rejections couple of times at two levels of altitude hmm. i would say okay So once uh, you know there was this designer in my team that did a lot of good work it was to envision some a new kind of uh, a new interface and they had done a lot of good work and then they were propose you know making the presentation to all of us there was leadership and it was mainly to leadership hmm. and uh, she set out the problem why it's important for us to solve it but then she went into her design process you okay. know like what are the different patterns she used and you know what are the mm, uh, sorry what are the different patterns she experimented with and explored she showed all of her explorations and why they wouldn't work and we noticed that they were getting very restless why, the, why do you think that happened yeah so basically her final proposal that she that she finalized was right at the end okay and the leadership it, it was dragged too much it was yeah it was dragging and they didn't really have the patience to sit through like you know three four different explorations and all the reasons why they wouldn't work okay that but that way of structuring presentations really work when you're talking to your team members not to the stakeholders not to the stakeholders you're actually talking to people who you need to bring them along on the journey okay that boss i looked at this pattern this didn't work because and so i did this this didn't work because so they are with you on that journey right. they want to understand what decisions you made along the way right but leadership trusts that this team would have made the right decision so show us the final thing right you know and uh, so flipping that and maybe using a more of a flashback structure okay. you know where you show the final and then get into the hows and whys that's very interesting so okay building a story it in itself is not the only thing that is important but the way you present it yes is also equally important it's equally important so the narrative takeaway. yes the narrative and like i said you know be very careful who the i mean be very cognizant of who the audience is how do you handle such failures because uh i have gone through numerous projects where i have proposed n number of things i have proposed out of 30 things i propose one gets approved that's the situation i have been through uh in the past uh few years a lot of years actually um and it's it's not easy Uh, at least in the initial years it's not easy to take that but then later you get used to it because you know that's the name of the game that's that's the way it works because not because it's your baby you do those things you build those things then you end up liking it mm. uh, and because you have created it you obviously end up liking it but then when they get rejected you get really disheartened um but then you once you learn that this is the way it works and you are not building it for yourself but you're building it to solve uh, something and somebody else has to take a call on it and when they don't end up approving it you know that um, this is how it is going to be um, so how is it to you know face that kind of a failure uh, how is it to fail such uh, face such rejections when you create such stories because it takes a lot of thinking it takes a lot of creativity to build such stories uh how is it to get rejected 
well it's it's uh, you know the it is definitely a very bad feeling uh, you know m- more more than how is it i want to touch upon how to handle those rejections yeah. very very um, uh, you know this actually happened like like you know like we spoke about a little bit earlier lots of times um the the sometimes the the ratio of failure to success is actually higher mm. right because yeah, yeah. you know it's a it's a hit or miss so a few things definitely are needed for the um, uh you know for the storytelling to succeed mm. you definitely need a few things yeah. a few factors that have to work and then we'll come to how you handle you know yeah. failure yeah. but first you know like to make it succeed first of all do we have the right talent yeah. to craft this like sometimes teams only don't have the right talent you know if you're like a team of say ux designers who are very you know who are very good ux designers but they haven't practiced this craft yet they haven't got exposure to different kinds of storytelling patterns yeah. then of course it would be really difficult to do this you know and win already like yeah. from the first trial yeah. itself right yeah. second thing is that the stakeholders the teams around you who are your cross craft partners and you know like m- me i've been working with um, you know uh shipping delivery uh, shipping and delivering designs like for the last 8 years like 4 weeks 6 weeks 3 months release cycles mm. right to be able to work uh, um a project like this into the timelines really needs advanced planning mm. so you need to work with the uh you know with your cross craft peers and say when is a good time to for us to do this project we need to spend about 2 weeks to uh envision this and you know having that kind of support and already the buy in hmm. helps because it's not going to help your cause if you know the teams are like oh they're busy doing this the design team is busy doing that yeah and engineers are getting blocked right a typical story so this is very na- natural and then the third aspect is a leadership leadership needs to support this activity yeah and uh, ultimately you know these kind of storytelling storytelling is a very low cost way to envision future scenarios a yeah. lot of times you know that the business is wor- thinking about whether to invest in this or that yeah and storytelling is actually a very low cost way to envision that without writing a line of code without putting a big team of people to work on it but it's a low cost way to envision do we want to invest in this or not yeah how much work does it should could it entail yeah so to answer these questions so you know that it's a uh, knowing that it's a way to do that and to support these kind of endeavors uh so the role of leadership is very important yeah so now coming to that when things like this fail right when the story that was presented it did not work probably you know basically oh but we don't want to um, address this customer segment at all hmm. or this customer segment has too much roi hmm. you know the amount of investment we will do but there you know the target market cannot uh, you know cannot grow that much mm. so what is the point of um, you know investing that much so in these cases of course you know you'll have to go back to the drawing board and start again yeah you'll have to make sure that are we addressing the right customer segment sometimes we just don't have data so you have to try yeah and sometimes you know uh, maybe that data exists it was not, just not available earlier or something like that two two points i want to uh, reiterate from what you said one is the support from leadership because often times they say that you know cut the crap give us the design uh, i have seen this happen a lot um two is that we get very little time that we don't get to craft these stories but we get time only to uh, you know work on the designs and execute the specs and hand it over to the devs so that the devs can start yeah. coding them I think that's the reality everywhere that's right That's the reality yeah. in in many different places I wouldn't say everywhere but that's the reality in many different so a lot of designers go through that and it's very unfortunate but uh yeah it's it's very hard for a designer to strike that balance and still find somehow a place and time uh so they can craft these stories and yeah this this is this is still the place that we are in um yeah, yeah. I I really hope that many more people pay attention to storytelling and pay value to storytelling and see how important it can be uh, while it's still not a guaranteed success um, it, while it still doesn't guarantee 
success of a product or the features that end up uh, being incorporated in a product because of storytelling and the assumptions that we end up making because of that like you said imagining the future of a product through storytelling might not be the sure shot success but uh, it can be a potential um, uh, yeah. right direc- direction that a product can take yeah and you're so right i think the role of leadership is very important here yeah you know because they have to to some extent keep an open mind yeah and believe in this like after all this is a thought exercise it's a thought experiment nobody has the answers yes these are just visionings different kinds of visions of course grounded in research but it, they're not predictive yeah grounded in research is exactly an under you know you, you need to underline that part exactly. so you can't like we already discussed you can't imagine and write fiction exactly that will not solve anybody's needs yeah and uh, here you know the fact is that if leadership does not support these kind of you know future uh, imaginings there is this um, um you know we 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 won't get too far if we just do tactical deliveries yeah there's always that right like if you have a very short term view you'll always be delivering tactically for the short term yeah but you don't know when some other disruptor comes and takes over your own space yeah so that's when you need to always keep an eye on the future yeah. as leadership Correct. there should be one eye to the future like you know 6 months ahead one year ahead right. how is my industry changing right i have to be ready for that right so those are the questions that storytelling can help answer right right this was very interesting conversation uh, i i really enjoyed it thoroughly um you want to recommend some nice books for our uh, viewers this can be about storytelling of course um i think the art of storytelling is something jay has already recommended in one of the episodes oh yeah that's a good book yes. yeah you can still recommend that if you like it design is storytelling yeah yeah uh yeah design is storytelling for ellen lopton i think right yeah uh, that's a very good book yeah um you you can recommend yours your favorite books as well yeah i um actually have a slightly different set so one is uh, making comics by linda barry okay you know she is the 60 year old professor in the us and amazingly talented woman mm-hmm. what she does through this book this book is a set of exercises that she does with children and you know as adults also you, you can do them they basically open up your the conditioning in your mind that you did not even know you had Mm-hmm. like um a lot of times like one exercise that i did once was imagine yourself as batman and okay. go through your whole day draw <laughs> your whole day with you doing those things okay so i had gone to the aadhar center that day to get my biometrics uh, you know <laughs> aadhar card updated or something so i i did you know i'm wearing the batman mask okay and i've gone to you, the aadhar center you wore center. that no i'm drawing that okay and that that whole juxtaposition was so funny Okay. That I'm going as a you know my day to day life as as Batman. I okay. I'm going as Batman, and you know I've gone for a walk with a friend, and I'm not um, walking with her. Okay. I'm actually like you know swinging from those, uh, you know here to there like Batman does with his uh, things, and then uh, at the other center basically you know they had I had to remove the mask to take my. um i biometrics biometrics right <laughs> so obviously those were so she basically she breaks out your uh, you know the subconscious biases that you yourself put and uh, you know draw yourself as a fruit mm. so the thing is that the mind and the imagination are like ela- as an elastic band you know the further you can stretch the more easily that it will stretch okay so you have to do these exercises and then when you need to stretch a little bit it's very easy Hmm. when you need to if you've already you know stretched it far like any muscle right so these are the exercises that she has um then there's um, understanding comics okay. by scott mccloud again one of the very definitive books i'd read when i was starting out uh the whole book is a comic he talks a lot about the uh, manipulating time for example okay how you can elongate time how you can shorten it and these things are very good to know because interaction design like a field of ux is uh, time is also a metaphor i mean time is also a material mm. time and behavior are the materials of interaction design mm. the same thing here as well like how you're manipulating behavior through you know speeding up time or elongating time mm. so that's again a very good book 
uh, Bird by Bird. That's a book on writing, basically. Okay. It's about, you know, using writing to articulate your thoughts better. Very simple, very well-written book. And I have a fiction book okay. as a fourth. Um, it's actually To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. Okay. Very thin book. But the whole book takes place over one uh, very short time frame, a half an hour in uh, the character's life. Okay. You know, and through that, you just go through them, through all of their thoughts and through all of their experiences. It's a classic, right? So you can obviously find out more online about it, but mm -hmm. read it for the experience of reading it. Okay. And uh, my last book is uh, Sketching User Experiences by Bill Buxton. Okay. So Bill Buxton's uh, concept of sketches is not just sketch drawings. You know, a prototype is a sketch. Right. For example, so a role play is a sketch. So he talks a lot about how do you envision concepts through these different tools and mechanisms. How do you imagine these situations? How do you craft prototypes to help, to help you uh, bring to life okay. some of these things? So again, very good elements that you can use in your day-to-day -day work. Cool. Thank you so much for the recommendations. It was great talking to you. Um, uh, you've given a lot of insights on why storytelling is important. I hope it inspires people to take up storytelling more and more in product UX design. I think it's very important that we do storytelling as part of our uh, UX design process because I see more and more people uh, get very logical with design and less emotional with design. I absolutely agree with that. People make decisions with emotion. Yeah. It's usually not logic, even yeah. though we would like to believe we are rational beings. We make decisions with emotions. So, you know, being able to tap into that emotion, being able to talk to that emotion, yeah. that's very important. Yeah. So, however, we want to use storytelling to resonate with people's emotions. Yeah. You know, like you said, you know, bringing that uh, balance back yeah. Yeah. between balance. logic and emotion. Yeah. yeah, I think it was a very insightful conversation. I think we touched a lot of aspects of... Uh, design that people usually don't talk about uh, in day-to-day -day conversations. All I've heard is the usual terminologies that people talk about in and around UX design. But I think storytelling is a very interesting topic that we talked about today. So thank you so much for uh, being here today, uh, taking your time out um, and educating all of us uh, with your experiences and uh, your insights, your information and, and a lot of lot of stuff that you shared. Thank you so much, Sunandini. Yeah, thanks, Eman. Yeah. It was a pleasure. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much. So that was Su Basu, you all. I hope this conversation was eye-opening. I had a lot of fun arranging, planning and shooting this. Please follow her on LinkedIn and other social handles. I've put up uh, all the links in the description. Reach out to me for any suggestions on topics and guests for the future episodes. Don't forget to share your storytelling experiences in the comment section. I'll be very curious to see what that is. Please like this video, share it with friends, follow me on social media. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe to my channel to support more such amazing content. As always, stay creative and I'll see you in the next one.